try and research your, your Douglas, own. Douglas, just made a claim. Now, yeah. Yeah. Can you support when, your claim? Who decided what we got into the um, deep? Oh, we'll come to no, that. They're talking about the Bible. No, no, no. no, no. It's a verse that talks about yeah, when yeah, Jesus yeah. and the disciples went to the garden. No, no, fair. It's a good question. Man. It's, 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 it's a man fled naked. That is believed to be Mark who wrote Mark's Gospel. So I'm not Who's Mark? Who's Mark? The Mark who wrote Mark's Gospel. You, you're actually saying Mark met, met Jesus at some point in he his life. He was around. He witnessed No, no, but that, sure that's not the point. You see, I'm not sure I, he ever spoke to You him. can be around in Australia and then you, can, you can't say something around that's happening. In, in, around in Jerusalem and witness some of the events. That's but but who's, who said that? That? How do you know that? Which scholar says that? As I said to you, the the, there's a verse that talks about a man fled naked from the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus and the disciples went there. That is believed to be Mark that wrote Mark's Gospel. No, no, no. So Mark fled naked? What was Mark doing naked in the Garden of Gethsemane? Yeah. That's yeah. a good question. Yeah. I don't know. What was he doing there? Only one gospel. Only one gospel. Seriously, man, come on. Only one gospel. Douglas, come on. Only one gospel says that a naked man flees the Garden. Yeah, only one. That's Only one gospel. That's true. Right, right. So going back to this, you made a claim that Mark was around, yeah. So can you substantiate that claim with some kind of evidence? That, that's, that, what I've given you already is the only evidence I've been able to give right, you so you today. have no evidence, then. We gave you today. But that's not evidence, is it? That's not evidence. Yeah. And anyway, do, do you believe there are errors in the in the canonized Bibles? Sorry, in the canonized uh, books. Well, which Bible does he actually adhere to? What, what, what do you mean by errors? Yeah. Errors means, for example, are there any mistakes, additions, uh, taking away things, any, any forgeries, any contradictions at, at all? All these are errors. Do you think there? Do you believe that the Bible is inerrant? Let's let's start with that. I believe the original manuscripts, the ori original autographs are inerrant. What is original? What do you define that, please? The original autographs. We don't yeah. have the original. Oh, do you actually have the autographs? Wow. No. No. You'd be a rich man if you did that. All right, so we can agree with you, but what 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 you have in your hand today is that inerrant? The canonized version. Yeah. Would you like me to give you one? NIV or KJV, which you prefer? <laughs> you you know the question. Look, picky poison. The canonized books. Do they oh, have errors? In it's when what you mean by inerrant? The translations. No translation is perfect. Okay, which Bible do you read? The NIV or the KJV? I tend to read the NIV. What's no the translation is perfect. What's okay, let me give you an example. Yeah. The story of the adulteress. Do you believe that is? Do you believe that is true? Uh, Yes, I believe that's true, but I don't believe it's canonical. But it's in the Bible. It's in your Bible. Yes, it's true. So how did you get there if it's not canonical? It's clearly canonized? delimited that the elementaries don't have it. No, oh, wait, 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 picky poison. Which one do you prefer? So it's clearly delimited in my Bible saying that the early manuscripts so don't NIV, have that NIV. Story. Okay. okay, so you believe that is something which is a forgery? No, I don't believe it's a forgery. Well, if Jesus didn't say it, it must be a forgery. Either Jesus said it or he didn't say it. Sorry, sorry. The, the, the new Gospels are not like the Quran. The Gospels are not the word of Jesus like the Quran is the word of Muhammad. No, 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 but the Jesus... These are supposed to be the words. It's attributed to Jesus. Who spoke to these words? No, no, they're biographies of Jesus. Yeah, but who spoke to the doctor's woman? Jesus actually spoke... Right, right. Exactly, I, I believe that's a question. it's a true story. I believe it's a true story. You believe it's true? Why do you think it's true? I believe it's canonical. Why do you think it's true? Well, what's true? the difference? What's the difference between think, something being true and something being canonical? It's not in the earliest manuscript. Did, did John it's record that story? In the earliest manuscript. Did John write that story? I don't think so, no. Right, so who wrote that story? I don't know who wrote it. Who, who you told wrote that story? <laughs> uh, I haven't been told who wrote that story. Well, it's in the Gospel of John, isn't it? I believe it. Okay, did the author of John... Uh, what, several reasons why I believe it. One, it does not contradict anything else in Scripture. But that wasn't the question. We're not talking about contradiction. We are talking about something that has been introduced into the Bible, which is not supposed I, to be I've the been, words I've of. I've been honest to say it's not canonical. I do not accept it as canonical. Yeah, but, but what canonical does that mean? doesn't mean that it's, it's not it's in the earliest manuscript. manuscript. That's not manuscript. what canonical means. What does that mean? Uh, You're using the wrong terminology now. So, so I'm, 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 I'm using the wrong terminology. I'm sorry. Okay. What I mean is, I do not believe that it has uh, divine inspiration. Okay, so why is it in the Bible still? Early people put it in. No, but why did not they wrong look, to do that? You know they have it is in, they have edited the very early Spanish. Douglas, they have edited in the Bible so many times. Why did they not take it out? Sorry, one second. Let's show you that picture back. Yeah. It's clearly oh, delineated. Yeah. Douglas, is there anything else in here that men put in that shouldn't be there? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. We have daughters from there. Five What do you mean by it shouldn't be? All right, this is NIV. Okay. This is NIV. Yeah. My NIV has a table of weights and measures. Alhamdulillah. So NIV is your Bible, yeah? I do not believe that's canonical. No. But I think there's no reason why it shouldn't be in there. So your NIV Bible does it contain verses that shouldn't be there? Hey, that's the story, the, uh, the adultery. I don't trust. No, but you're told yeah. that it shouldn't be there, isn't it? It's clearly delineated. It's not been in the earliest manuscripts. Right, but it's in your NIV. Yes, it's there. All right, but there are any verses that are there that you're not told are not in the earliest manuscripts. 
Sorry, the word diversity, it's the end of Mark. No, 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 that you're not aware of, that you've not been warned about, you've not been shown where the forgeries took place. Um, I don't believe there are, but I might be wrong. But, so if I can show you what, at least one place, yeah, will you at least be honest enough to question what else could possibly be also false? Um, if you're going to show me one, and I expect because you've claimed it, I expect you will do. Yes. Um, I believe that the doctrines from these things are out on the margins. They're uh, not the fundamental doctrines of Christianity. Well, I'm going to. It won't affect the fundamental. Really? Doctrine of Christianity. Okay. Can you show me anywhere that? Can you show me anywhere in your New Testament where this Trinity idea is mentioned? Uh, Great Commission, Matthew 28. Right, 2819? What? 2819. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right, right, so you do right. It's not 19, but the one's following. Right, so you just said that there's no, no verse in the New Testament, if you removed it, would change doctrine, yes? Would you agree? No, 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 no. Well, you need to say that. No, you said to me, you implied that you're going to be able to show me verses. A verse, and there. you said that verse. A verse, it will not show a fundamental point Right, 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 right. That's what I said. Right, so, okay. right. so the verse I'm going to show you So now. if you took out the verse in Matthew 28 about the Great Commission, then I think that might change doctrine fundamentally. Right, let me take that away then. So something like, for example, no, you just the said Trinity. It. You just admitted it. Yeah. 28. Shall so I, I, I don't... Well, I'm going to do it. No, who can show you? Why do you think that verse shouldn't be there? Well, I'm going to show you why. You right. think it should be there, yeah? I, I, have heard no, I haven't heard of a reason before why you should. Well, the reasons we know other verses were removed is because you found older manuscripts, isn't it, that exposed them, yeah? Fair enough? The earliest manuscripts don't yeah. contain them. Right. So we, we don't know any early manuscripts in the 4th century, so we couldn't use that method, yeah? So let's use another method. Now, your, your claim is this, that the verse in Matthew where Jesus made the Great Commission, baptised all nations with the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, yeah? Now, even if we were to challenge the idea that that's the Trinity, we could do, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just take it off you. All right. So if, here's a question for you. Anis, can you put that on? So, 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 so here's the question for you. Did the disciples follow out what Jesus said? First question. That's the thing. No, no, no. Did they or not? Um, Peter went to Cornelius. Now, according to Acts, did any of the disciples baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Uh, I don't think it records the words that they said when they baptized. Yes, in the name of Jesus, it says. So right, maybe, right. maybe one example right, right, they right, use that right, wording, right. it doesn't mean there aren't examples okay, where okay, they use the other words. Okay, okay. Uh, what, did I, what did I just say to you? I said I'm going to remove it from you. I'm not going to leave you, I'm going to leave you in no doubt. Sorry, I think the, the approach to saying the disciples did not do this no, no, no. is not going to remove it. Well, I'm going, no, but, I should, but I'm going to do something now that will. Okay. All right. And I want you to be intellectually honest here, Douglas. You're on film here. All right. Right. You said if I can remove this verse or put doubt in it, then that will affect a fundamental doctrine of Christianity. Is that correct? I did say that. Fantastic. Thank you for your honesty. Okay. Now, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to do it. Relax. Have patience. Uh, actually, it, it, <laughs> have patience. There are numerous places in the Bible where uh, I get the Trinity. Oh, you can, you can, not just this oh, oh, okay. This may be the clearest Okay, one. okay. Well, let me just take... Jesus. Look, your words were this. If I can remove 28 and what followed 19, yeah, away, then you said that will affect the fundamental doctrines of Christianity. Your words. I did, but I'm going to need to question whether I got that right. Well, you can you can do that, but you can't because there's nothing else. Anyway, unless you want to go one five seven, that's another story. But let's just first John five seven. Come on. No, no, I, I would all get right, the anyway. Trinity from the Old Testament. Uh, uh, I would get the Trinity right, from the right, Old right. Testament. Anyway, the okay. Testament. But let's just take this verse away from you, so you'll never use this again. No, I. I well, let's see in it, because you don't know what I I'm going to bring. Hear your argument. I'll have to do that. <laughs> do you accept that if there's a manuscript before the fourth century, yeah? that doesn't contain this concept of Trinity, baptised on nation of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, then you, you accept then the principle that they shouldn't be there, yeah? No, one manuscript wouldn't be enough. No, he's talking about only this one, this particular one. Well, call it Sinaiticus is enough. So if you showed me one manuscript that didn't contain that verse, that would not be enough. No, I showed you an earlier manuscript, complete manuscript. He said, he said earlier to the fourth century. Earlier to the fourth century. Any yeah, but number. just one, one wouldn't be enough. No, it's because you can't. If you show me one that doesn't have it, there might be a million that do. Repeat Get the right a million, but it might be every other one does. So that wouldn't just show me one that doesn't have it, it's not enough. All right. Let me make it easier for you then. Have you heard of Eusebius? 
I could be open, really open now to talk about is that Brazilian football? Like, no. Uh, That's you say VO. <laughs> That's not you say VS. Yes. Um, probably I haven't heard of it, no. You haven't? One of your greatest church fathers? I, I don't claim to have heard of all of them. All right. Well, he's one of your greatest church fathers, right? And he inherited the library of Origin and Polycarp. Right. So from this we can deduce that he would have had access to manuscripts older than 4th century. Obviously, because he existed before the 4th century. He couldn't have had 4th century ones. So we can accept that. Oh, okay. Century, yeah. Now, when he quotes Matthew 28, 19, 17 occasions. What does Firstly, he... It's not 28, 19. It's the first thing that follows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just at the end of 28. Uh, end of 28. Okay. When he quotes those verses, what does he say? Obviously, I've never heard of it, so I don't know. Right. So if you have a, you have a. Now we have a church father, and if you if you look at the history of him, he's like the father of the church. His name is Eusebius. So check it out. Listen, Douglas. Be honest, yeah. And he inherited the library of Origin and Polycarp. So this guy's got some serious information, yeah. No, listen. You don't have to accept it. Sorry, we, we, Polycarp used to hang around with John. He may have selectively quoted it for a particular purpose. All right. He quoted this verse that he's reading from his manuscripts, which are pre fourth century, as agreed. As I say, he may have selectively quoted from that passage for, for a particular purpose. Right. I'll say it again to you. I'll say it again to you. Mr. Pickley bit out. Doesn't prove. I'll say it again to you. When, when Eusebius, the father of the church, reading from manuscripts older than the 4th century, this is what he says in the Great Commission. Make disciples in my name. Make disciples in my name. Make disciples in my name. And when we look at what the disciples did, they made the disciples in his name. One example. No. You only give me one example. No. I've give you, here's what I've give you now. Now let's test your intellectual no, honesty. No, no, there's only one. You, well, let's you test only it. give me one example. I only that, need to give you one. Then. All I need no, to do, no, I'll no. explain to you. Eusebius. Be baptized uh, uh, many times in that. I'll say it again to you. Be baptized many times in that. Every one time. Example one. Every time. If you read the book of Acts, every time a baptism is made, it's in the name of Jesus. Not only the book of Acts. If you look anywhere, anywhere. in the New Testament, any baptism, do name they of use Jesus. This commission, the Great Commission. Do they use it? Right, right. The only other baptism I know about, other than the book of Acts, is when Jesus was baptized. Douglas. That's the only other baptism. Douglas. I know about. Douglas. Any time a d disciple baptized somebody, it was always in the name of Jesus. Now we know Eusebius was reading from earlier manuscripts in the 4th century and when he read this verse he didn't use the Trinity concept. He may have had his reasons for doing that. You can have, you can, you can faff around all you like, but the reality is this. Now listen to the reality. Look at what he said in context. We'll, well, what, what we can do is this. It's very, very simple. We'll, look at what he said in context. We can, what we can do is this. We can look at what the father of the church quoted seven. Listen. We're not looking at the context. Are you listening? Him. Listen him. We're not looking at the Are you context. Listening? Are, you Are you listening or not? I am listening. All right. We can look at the father of the church, who had the library of origin and Polycarp, who had older manuscripts from fourth century. That when he quoted Matthew 28, he didn't say what the Bible says today. Now listen. Now listen. No, but what, looking looking at, passage, but what we are looking at. But what we are looking at. This is what we're discussing. Yeah, we see. Whether somebody it's used it's that during the baptism. Had a particular reason. No, 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 no. No, but you've got to understand context, the comparison. He might have had a particular reason. Douglas. Why he didn't Douglas. Exactly. Douglas. Douglas. I've said it again to you for the last time. You say. Yes, the father of the church read from manuscripts older than what you've ever seen in your life and when he reads this verse he doesn't read it as it read today and when we look at the actions of the disciples and when they did baptism they marry up exactly for what you say we said you claim there was no 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 I, I can't listen right you now here and I Douglas, 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 Douglas 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 I'll say it again to you Douglas Douglas can I say it again to you can I say it again to you I'm gonna repeat it I'm gonna repeat it listen please sorry the problem is I accept one thing and you then no I haven't added nothing. Yes, I haven't added nothing. Principles remain the same. Principle? The What's the principle? One example. No, no, no. And you no, now you're no. Every time no. They no, I didn't. Here's what I said. Here's my claim. I haven't looked. I Here's want to check that out before I... Here's my claim. This. I'm not seem to accept it now, Douglas. I want you to go away and research this. Absolutely. All right, okay. Now, here's my claim. There is nowhere... Anywhere in your Bible, does any disciple baptize in a name other than Jesus? N nowhere. That's my claim. First thing. 
I would think. No, you can challenge that. I would think there are times when they don't actually have the wording of how they baptize. All, right. All I can say I to you is this: Do like you that. accept that every time the Bible mentions baptism, it's in the name of Jesus? Yeah. Do you? No, I don't. You don't accept that. So, do you? Can you show us something other than where it's not Jesus? Where the Trinity well, formula is used in the baptism? No, no, that's good. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Okay. I, I think I'm going to find you at least fine. examples where they don't have a word. We don't know what words they use. All right. I think we're going to find look, examples. Let me ask you something. If Jesus says to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you really think any of his disciples, and Paul, or anyone of, of significance, would actually reject that command of Jesus? And this is because they use a different word. It doesn't mean they reject no, but, it. No, 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 no. Mean they but, hold, you're using God. this to support the Trinity. Exactly. And, and no, dis, no disciple baptized in the Trinity. I wouldn't just use that one verse to support the Trinity. Okay, you just did. The Great Commission you used. What is the other oh, one you sorry. used? Oh, you haven't asked me to support the Trinity. I would you did? You, I would give you many, many... Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, sorry, Douglas, Douglas. You know this is being filmed, isn't it? question. Yeah, I asked you what verse supports the Trinity, and you said the Great Commission, no, Matthew say, 28. You didn't say Trinity in that question. What was the question? Why did you respond with 28 then, Matthew 28? Yeah, why did you? What do you think I asked you? Any doctrine. Is there any doctrine? That does what? Is there any verse that would, if it was removed, would make a doctrine question? No, no, before that. Okay, anyway, I don't think you mentioned let's, about Trinity. Let's not talk that. about something which, I did. which, which I is not really, I uh, mean, basically, what do you have. Because already, that's the doctrine, Trinity. Yeah. What you have already accepted is, or you have actually considered to, is this particular uh, command from Jesus to baptize in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you believe that is important or not? Um. That verse is important for many different ways. What? Important in the sense that if this verse wasn't there, would it make any difference to any doctrines in the Bible? Um, it would let, it certainly lessen the impact of the teaching on some doctrines. So, so let me rephrase that question. At least Can someone baptize other than this, uh, the formula in the Great Commission? If someone baptized other than that formula, I don't think it would invalidate the baptism. Really? You're yeah, sure about that? I don't that? think it would invalidate So the basically, that, that particular verse, if, even if it wasn't there, wouldn't be that significant. No, I think if you're going to baptize, that's the preferred wording to you. But if you baptize and use a different word, so I don't think it would invalidate the baptism. Well, you use the words with the Great Commission. There must be some meaning for that, right? Why is it so great if it doesn't matter? Uh, I, as I said, I think that is the preferred wording you would use. Okay. Absolutely, that is the wording you should be best to use. Uh, Douglas. But they wouldn't even validate Douglas. the baptism just because you didn't use that D wording. Douglas, 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 listen, you can't backtrack now. You've already said it would affect, it would affect doctrine. You said it yourself. I and then you said... It was not the doctrine of baptism that I was... No, 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 no. We said, no, 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 no. It wasn't that doctrine. You said, this is what you said, I'll tell you your words, and the camera doesn't lie, you can check it out, EF Tower, yeah? You've lied about Listen. what you said. Come you've on. lied about yes. what you said to me. What, what did I say? That? You said one thing, and then later on you claimed you said something else. No, I'll tell you exactly what I said, because I know what I said, because I said it, all right? And I'll repeat myself. Okay. You said to me, there's no verse that can affect doctrine. That's what you said, right? And the doctrine I went after was Trinity. No, he said. No, he, he said. He's the one who said. No, that well, this he, is the one 2019. No, 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 before 2019. What, 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 that's exactly what I said. I said to, he said to me, doesn't matter what verse you remove, it cannot change the doctrine. the doctrine. So I said to you, where do you find doctrine of Trinity? You went Matthew 28, 19, the Great Commission. Yeah? Then I said to you, I'm going to remove that then. And then you backtrack saying, I can find it elsewhere. So here's what we do find it elsewhere as well while we're here. Give me another verse that tells you about the Trinity. How about First John five seven? Yeah. You know that? You know I'm not going to give you that verse. So what are you going to? Why you not, but you I'm don't have anything that else that supports. What else the you got then? What else have you got from the New Testament? You said there's plenty of others. There's plenty of reason for believing the Trinity. No, 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 no. I can't give you one verse. I can't okay, okay. Give, you one give me another word that head. that is as clear <coughs> or basically. No, I, I don't think there is another verse. So you don't right, think right, there's right, any right. other word? So that's clear. Right. But I think the doctrine is there written throughout the whole Bible. No, 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 no. Why would you not give First John five seven? I want to know that. Yeah, yeah. Why would you not? give that because that's not in the early so, so you think that's a forgery as well that's the first verse you mentioned that I would say was a forgery. Fantastic. So here's the thing. And it's not in my Bible at all. No, no, it's no. Not in the text of my Bible. I'll handle it. But Douglas, Douglas, Douglas. You, what we've established today, okay, is this, and this is what I want you to reflect on. Are you listening? Just because you don't have older manuscripts in fourth century, so you can't expose the extra forgeries yet. Eusebius did. 
And he was reading something different. You've, sorry, you've quoted one church father who's quoted this one verse. I've quoted. And he quoted it differently okay. what we have in our I've quoted. Today. I'll tell you what I've quoted. That doesn't All right. mean that the other before church you father, throw, there might be many other before you throw, who've quoted that verse and quoted it in a way that's accurate to our Okay, okay. Today. Before you throw Eusebius under the bus. I'm not showing him under you the bus. You just did. So just because he got one thing wrong doesn't mean the other thing's But no, 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 no. Really no, but here's the point you're missing. Just because he got one thing Here's wrong. the point you've got to understand. He was reading from older manuscripts than what you've read from. And we know older manuscripts expose later forgeries. We know this. Was he the only church father that quoted from early manuscripts? Okay. No. He's absolutely you're sure he was not. Okay. He's one of the top Do you know, listen to me. You know, this is why I'm saying to you about throwing you Savius under the bus. I he's the he's the classed as the father of the church. He has the library of origin and polycarp. I would dispute the father of the church. Maybe a father. One of the church Okay, fathers. first thing. One of the church First fathers. thing, first yeah. thing, you've already said you don't know who Eusebius was. I haven't heard of him before. Right. So how are you many, now telling us about him? There many church Douglas, Douglas, Douglas. There Douglas. were many church okay. fathers. There was one church father who said church father. <laughs> there were you. many church fathers. <laughs> right, right. That's what I was objecting to. No, 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 to but you. what I said to you is what he's known as. He's known as his nickname, Father of the Church. Was he that inherited. In was that in his day? Name a church father inherited the library of Polycarp and Origin. <laughs> I, I haven't studied the church fathers well enough to have been to answer a question. Right, right, right. But now here's the point, you see. Church fathers were reading manuscripts older than the 4th century. Of course they were. Now, if they're, reading the if they're reading something, if they're reading something different to what you're reading today, they're the authority, not this. Right, but you've quoted one church father. Right, I've quoted the one great verse, one of the... important verse, but one church father referencing one verse. You would need to look at all the church okay. fathers and how they all first reference thing, that one First verse. thing, we've quoted one of the greatest church fathers, right? Right? Who quoted this verse 17 times? <laughs> okay, well, you know more about me than him. And the same church father is reading from manuscripts older than what you have. Right, okay, why don't you tell us another church father which you know of? I have said something these different. Things. I haven't studied this. So you don't know any church fathers? I can probably name the odd one off the top of my head. Go on, you have some church father, we father we that you know. But we don't need. Why are discussing it? He doesn't know the subject. That's not a relevant point. What we need is church fathers who've quoted that verse. And no, I don't know you something otherwise, because he's shown you one. I showed you one quote you 17 times. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, except, well. Reading from manuscripts older than what you have. Oh, yeah. And we know older manuscripts expose, expose later forgeries. Oh, yeah. And we know the disciples, when they did their actions, followed exactly what Eusebius was saying. Uh, you've claimed that and I haven't looked it up. Alright, look you've it up. Alright, Douglas, look it up. Okay, Doug, Douglas, I'll, I'll give, us, give us another verse or verses from the New Testament. Go on, go on. That's supposed to the Trinity. Yeah, he hasn't got any. Go on. Darren, so that is your, that is your no, quote Darren. of Jesus' baptism. Jesus' baptism. Jesus is baptism. Okay, how Darren, this is Mark. How oh, are you doing, Mark? Oh, hello, yeah. Yeah, uh, nice yeah hello. Have you ever met Darren before? Uh, no. No, Darren. Yeah, Mark. Hello, Mark. So, how do you know Zubair? You know from the mosque. Yeah. Uh, Douglas, you know what the Trinity means? We've got the guy here. The Trinity doesn't mean three, one the God th in three persons. Exactly, it doesn't mean three, it means these three are one. Well, so you tell me how the dove, the voice and Jesus are one. How are they one? You, you can't get that from my friend. Exactly, you can't get that from my Exactly, so that is the question I asked you. Show me one verse or verses from the New Testament that support the Trinity. <laughs> There is a one verse. Seriously, your most important doctrine. You need to look at many. No, no, Douglas, I didn't say one. I said one or more verses. I didn't say one only. Show me one or more verses from the New Testament or the Old as well. That's supposed to the Trinity. Jesus says Gone. that he, um, everything he does is in line with the Father's will. How is that three in one? I probably misquoted that verse. So even if you did quote it correctly, how is that three in one? Two of them are working together perfectly. No, but the, the Trinity is not two. Working together Douglas, the, the Trinity is not two. The Trinity is three in one, not two in one. If I've shown the two of them are working together. So those two of them could be part of the Trinity. Hold on, work, working together means what? They are one? So if you work with your boss, you and your boss are one? Perfectly. I, mean, I can't work perfectly with my boss. How, what do you mean perfectly? In what sense? In what sense perfectly? Because Jesus, Jesus did many things. Sorry, Jesus couldn't do many things that the Father could do. For example, Jesus didn't know Jesus didn't know the last hour. The Holy Spirit did not That's know not the last action. hour. No, in the earth, it's not an action. Well, it's, it's, it's something that the Father knows, Jesus didn't know. Yes. So, they are not, so in, terms, in yes. terms of their knowledge, they are not the same. They are not co-equal. Do you true. agree? That's true, yes. Okay, and the Holy Spirit is also not co-equal. So at, when Jesus was a man on earth, that's true? No, when, that. the same verse says only the Father knows, Mark 13, 32. By that it means 
The Father is the only one who has this no, knowledge. No, no, no. I accept that Jesus didn't know, and the, no one else on earth knew, and that the Father didn't say, oh, I don't expect you can infer uh, uh, whether the Spirit knew from that verse. Douglas, it doesn't say on earth. Do you added that in. I do not. It says no one knows. That is basically an exclusive. I have not added words in there. I was, yeah, you said on earth. I used that to say everyone on earth didn't know. That's what, what I was saying. I it, was not adding those words to the Bible. Douglas, it has, a, it has even the angels in there. Are the angels not in heaven? Yes, okay, the angels didn't okay, know. Okay, so, so angels. people in the heaven and believe, people on earth didn't know. I do not believe you can infer from that verse that the Spirit didn't know. What does only the Father mean? You can't get more exp explicit than no, that. No, because there are other verses where, where you can have a similar wording where it's clear the Spirit did know. Okay, so you can but find... Not, not this verse. Douglas. Not clear from Douglas, this verse. Let, we are talking about the last hour here. Are you saying there is actually a verse in, the, in anywhere in the Bible where it says the Holy Spirit knows the last hour. No, what I'm exactly. saying is, what I was saying is there's was that wording where it says only the Father knows, yes. where it's clear that the Spirit also knew from the context. So, so when, not, not about this issue, about other things. No, but you're talking about the last hour. Let's stick wording, to one topic. This wording does not imply, I would argue this wording does not imply the Spirit did not know. Douglas, we're talking about the last hour. So, why, why is it relevant whether the Spirit because, did or not? You know why it's relevant? I don't think it's because, relevant. Look, look, do you believe God is all-knowing? The one try you got is all-knowing. Where does this a triune God? It says the Father very clearly. It doesn't say triune, triune God. God should I believe you or should I believe Jesus? The one triune God has all knowledge. No, no. Should I believe Douglas or should I believe Jesus? Because Jesus says only the Father knows. Douglas says the triune knows. Whom, should, whom do I believe? If the Father knew that issue, therefore the one triune God knows that issue. Therefore what I'm saying is true. Oh, so let me get this right. If the Father knows, everybody knows in the Trinity. No. The tri therefore the Trinity, the one triune God knows. Oh, no. If the Father knows, then the one triune God knows. Okay, Douglas, let me ask you this question once again. If the Father knows, then the one triune God knows. Let me ask, stop interrupting. If the Father knows, does the Holy Spirit and the Son automatically know? Um, maybe today, but not when Jesus was a man on earth. No, but I didn't ask you today or yesterday. I asked you generally, if the Father knows... I said maybe today, but not while Jesus was a man on earth. So not all the time. Okay. No. So when Jesus was man on earth, was he 100% God? I don't know what that phrase means, but yeah, I'm just hundred percent God I means. Really what, that okay. means. what that phrase means is basically he is fully God. Yeah, I accept that he was fully. So God. if he's fully God, why is he ignorant of certain things? Well, because I don't believe you need to be all knowing to be God. Really? I don't believe. So when God says he's omniscient, he's all knowing in the Bible. Was he telling a lie? The one triune God is all knowing. Absolutely, the one triune God is all knowing. But the Father is all knowing as well. Um, I think it's reasonable to assume the Father is all knowing. Okay, so the Father is all knowing, but the other, but the two thirds of the of the Trinity is basically ignorant of the last hour. Jesus was ignorant of the last hour. As I've said, I do not accept you can infer from that verse that the Trinity is. That the Spirit, I can actually because look, if if Jesus had said, only God knows. Then your, your point, I, I, Douglas, I, I, let me finish. Then your point would be valid. If Jesus says no one knows the hour, not the angels in heaven, not the son, except the father in heaven, then I will exclude the, the son, I will exclude, exclude the spirit, I'll exclude you, I'll exclude me, I'll exclude everyone else except the father. But if, if Jesus had said no one knows except God, then yes, you got a point that the Spirit knows, my reason that, that the whole, the triune God knows. My reason for believing you cannot infer that from the, about the Spirit from that verse is I can. that there are other verses with the same word about different, I'm sorry, I, didn't, I haven't got those. Wait, words. paraphrase it to me, go on, paraphrase uh, it, because uh, you uh, believe they, there are other words. There are other verses with the same wording where it's clear that, it, that the Spirit does know that point. What, the hour? Seriously? Not, no, not, not the hour. But we are talking about the hour, I'm not talking about other things. I'm not talking about other things. Yeah, but it's that wording in other the verses does not explain the Spirit didn't know. Okay, since there are no explicit verses that say that the Holy Spirit knows the hour. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not claiming the Holy Spirit Douglas. doesn't know the hour. I'm saying I'm Oh, does he or does he not? I, will, I don't know. But I'm not going to infer from So that you're saying Jesus way. was telling a lie when he no, says only the Father I'm, knows. I believe you cannot infer either way from that verse, but the Spirit knows no, Jesus, very, That's what I'm Jesus is very clear. He says only the Father knows. Was he telling a lie? Sorry, uh, if the Spirit knew, he would have said the Spirit knows 
and the father knows but because Jesus said only the father knows was he telling a lie maybe Jesus didn't know whether the spirit knew or not oh my maybe god Jesus, Jesus didn't know maybe Jesus didn't know whether so what the else did he know not. you know what else he didn't know he didn't know that the figs don't bear fruit in outside the season of figs I don't think you can infer that really no okay so because we are Jesus may have deliberately pretended not to know in order to teach his disciples a, tr a spiritual truth you know why you approach a fig tree because he was hungry <laughs> Because he was hungry and when he realized there's no figs on it. How do you know that he wasn't just making a spiritual point to teach his disciples? Because he say, it says so. If you read the Bible. Do, do that action. Do no, the action no, no. of pretending to be hungry or actually If you read hungry, the Gospels, it, it says. Cursing this fig tree because he hadn't food. Douglas, it says very clearly he opposed the fig tree because he was hungry. It says very clearly in the Gospels. How, how do you know that through that. Not me, defense, the, the, the Gospels say this. of being hungry and cursing the fig tree, he wasn't teaching the disciples a okay, message. I'll tell you what. There's a fig tree which doesn't bear fruit in the season of figs. Will it actually bear fruit out? In, sorry, in the season of figs, will it actually bear fruit? If it did not bear fruit when Jesus it wanted it, okay. Would Why would now you tell me? Was the fig tree following the laws of nature? It may been old and nearly dead. Hear me out. Hear me, been old hear me out, Douglas. Dead. I didn't even ask you the question yet. A fig tree which is perfectly good, which is bearing fruit only in the season of figs and not outside the season. Is that fig tree following the laws of God? It bears fruit only in the season of figs. Um, it depends how you fare. No, it's very simple. No, because I wouldn't define no? the laws of God. God made, I don't believe in evolution, but I do I believe in evolution. In, yes, this is relevant to your question. It's relevant to the subtleties of your question. You know question. the trees, the, the flowers bloom God in spring. Created, Isn't that the law God of nature? God created creatures with the ability to change to adjust to their environment. But I, so just because God created things one way, doesn't mean that they were behaving that way. 2,000 years later. So therefore, so are you saying the fig, the fig trees have evolved now, compared to 2,000 believe, years? I don't like the way na select natural selection. I believe in natural. I'm not talking about that. I think you've you got it completely wrong. I'm just asking you. A fig tree bears fruit only in the season of figs. Do you agree or disagree with that? Um, you could create a fig tree by by but human methods. I'm talking you could about that. Look, tree. I'm talking about a non-hybrid fig tree. Okay? Okay. okay, okay, a natural fig tree. Okay, right. Does it bear fruit outside the season of figs? No. Good. The fig tree with Jesus approach. Do you think that was a hybrid fig tree? No. Good. So we, let's stick to something which is natural, which is common sense, in the sense that it only bears fruit in the season of figs. Now, Jesus, why did Jesus approach the tree? He might wanted to teach his disciples something. No, that's what the gospel says. The gospel says because he was hungry. By being hungry, he was going to teach his disciples something. Teach By what? being hungry and cursing the okay. fig tree. So what is he teaching the disciples? By cursing a fig tree which is following the laws of nature. What do you learn from it? Following the laws. Well, according to you. No, no, we, look, we already agreed it's a natural fig tree which only bears figs in the season of figs. It wasn't bearing figs though. Exactly, because yeah. it wasn't the season of figs. But it also, I think it's like the fig tree was old. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't say it's old. You just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't he know it then? Okay, look, look. The important thing is that there are two things Jesus. That's fine. Jesus was ignorant of the last hour. Jesus was ignorant I of the fixed season. Jesus was ignorant of the last hour. I do and not the fixed season. I think there were other ways of looking at the fixed You know, even the farmer. There are other ways of looking at the fixed season. Even a farmer during the time of Jesus would have known. This fig tree will not bear fruit outside the season of figs. Even a farmer yes, would have known. Yes, I agree. Now, how can a farmer know something that Jesus, the God Almighty, doesn't know? Jesus may have been using that to teach his disciples. Okay, what do you learn by cursing a good fig tree? What do you learn? Go on, tell me. We don't know that it's a good fig tree. It may have been old and nearly a bastard year. But that's not what he said. You're just making up. May have been old. Speculating now. So you're, you're, you didn't know he was good either. You didn't know he was good either. Was that? You claimed he was a good fig tree. We don't know that either. What? We don't know that either. We don't know that he's good. So, I came but I'm not saying. I'm, look, look, I'm, 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 I'm not testing our knowledge. He was good. Douglas, I'm not testing. You don't know that he was good. I'm testing that he was old. Jesus did not say it was a bad fig tree. The reason Jesus approached it because he was hungry is because he assumed because he assumed that there was a tree. It's a bad fig tree. No, he didn't say that. That's why he cursed it. No, he didn't say it was a bad tree. You're making it up. But anyway, these are the things that Jesus didn't know. Now, for Almighty God. I've accepted this one thing Jesus says no. I am still I'm not accepting Oh that's fine if you don't want to do fig tree. If you don't want I've to be convinced, that's fine. He did fine. not know the day and the hour. I've accepted that. Right. right? He did not know but the day. But isn't and the God hour. all knowing? 
The one triune God is all knowing. And the one triune God? The one triune God is all knowing. Okay, where does it say that in the Bible? The one triune God knows all everything. Uh, the reason the exactly. You see, you Sorry. cannot even support what you're saying by, by the Bible. What you're doing is you're speculating things which are not in the Bible. Uh, I actually showed you the exact you verse. The, the I actually supported my way. case with the verse in the Bible, Mark 13, 32, very clearly says that only the Father knows. Now you're saying the triune God knows. Whom do I believe, Jesus or you? Just because the Father, if the Father knows, then the one triune God knows. Why does it say that in the Bible? It follows naturally. Back it up. No, back, it, no it doesn't follow logically. naturally. No, it doesn't. Logically. Because the, if the triune God knows, then Jesus would have known. So, uh, uh, the quiz team, right? If one person in the quiz team knows about pop music, the quiz team knows about pop music. If one person in the quiz team knows about sport, then the quiz team knows about sport. And if nobody knows in the quiz team, then the quiz team doesn't know. Exactly. But in the case of Jesus, Sorry, in the case no, of Jesus, the case of, hold on, in hold the on. Case of the no, Douglas, last Douglas, hour, Douglas, the Father knew definitely. Yes. Spirit, we don't know. The Son didn't know. Therefore, the one true you but know God. But you said the Triune God knows. Yes, because one member knows. Because but one, one member is not the Triune God. <laughs> Your if definition is wrong. Knows, Your definition is wrong. If one member knows, then the triune God Douglas, knows. Douglas, one member doesn't make up a triune God. Why are you using the word triune God? In the same way that if one member of the quiz team knows about but this sport, is, so you're saying God is a team. Quiz team. Are you saying God sport. is a team? So if the one member of the quiz team knows about is God, God a team of gods? No. Exactly. So why are you I'm calling it a analogy. team then? I'm using an analogy. If one it's a bad analogy. If one member of the quiz team knows about sport and there's a sport question, it's either a, get that right. Douglas, it's either a family of God, a team of God. What is it? Because you're saying you're making it basically like a group I'm of gods. An analogy, Lee, it's a bad analogy. It's a the very bad analogy. And if one member of the Trinity knows, then it's fair enough to say that the, what, the, the, the triune God as a whole knows. But Jesus didn't know. I accept Jesus didn't know. I'm not disputed that. Okay. I've never it's, disputed that. So if Jesus, wait, 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 if Jesus didn't know, that. how can you say the triune God right, knows? So except that when he was a man on earth, he didn't know. You know what? During that gospel Can I ask you why you're speculating know. things which are not in the Bible? I'm not speculating. Because when you say the triune God knows, that's my understanding. Unless you're saying the means. Father knows by that. Because no, the yeah, Father is not triune. You know if that. the Father knows, then the oh, one triune God okay. is, is the Father. Is the Father the Holy Spirit? Knowledge is within let, the one let me ask you. God. Is the Father the Holy Spirit? No. Is the Father Sorry. the Son? Wait a minute, I'm asking, I haven't finished. I'm trying to is explain. the Father I'm the calling. Spirit? Is the Father the Holy Spirit? You no. said no. Is the Father the Son? No. No. So, so, so how can you say they all know if they're all different? Every way you look my at it is bad. Is, my point is, wrong. if one member knows, then... The, no, then, no, 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 then no, 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 no. When you say one member knows, when it says clearly the other member doesn't know. How can you say they all know? They all don't know. Only I the Father knows. They all know. I'm saying the one triune God is a whole know. It says explicitly only the Father knows. Why should I believe you? Who's speculating, which is not even supported saying, by the Bible. If the Father knows, can you go to the one triune God and find out... There's the no one triune question. God. That's not in the Bible. You're making things up. What you're saying is not supported by the Bible, unfortunately. No verse in the Bible supports the Trinity. No Bible, sorry, no verse in the Bible or verses in the Bible support the Trinity. Many verses. Okay, show me one. Go on, let's see. I've shown you. No, you haven't. You failed. The Great Commission. The Great Commission. Look, look, even the Great Commission doesn't prove the Trinity. Sorry, I've said to you, I need to go. Okay, that's fine. No problem. We can continue. Next time, make sure you get the verses to support your case rather than speculating. I'm not Yeah, so you could find a verse of my yeah, I agree with that. All right, no problem. Take care. Thanks, Douglas. <laughs>